Hello, everyone. This is Corey Dobbs of Action Coach Business Coaching. I'm excited to have Karen Kirchmeyer, CEO of Partners for Community Development, with us today. Karen joined the team of Partners for Community Development, we'll call them Partners, uh, in 2020, where she succeeded Lucio Fuentes as the Executive Director. Karen is eager to, con to continue the mission and vision of the organization and strengthen the communities that Partners serves. Karen holds dual degrees in administrative leadership and communications and has worked in the nonprofit sector for over two decades, focusing on creating social change that leads to better lives in healthier communities. Partners for Community Development is a 501c3 that provides resources that connects communities with safe and affordable housing while building life-strengthening opportunities. Partners focuses on social services programs and energy assistance, residential energy conservation, housing rehabilitation, and home buying assistance. And she'll tell us more about that later. Um, but Partners serves the Eastern Wisconsin counties of Brown County, Door County, Kiwani County, Manitowoc, Calumet, Sheboygan, Ozaki, and now Milwaukee County. A fun fact about Karen is before moving to, to the Sheboygan area, so she lives and works out of the Sheboygan office. Um, but you guys, you don't live out of that office, do you? Some days? <laughs> well, it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she spent almost every weekend in the summer in Sheboygan County. And her favorite season is football season. Yes. Go Pack so, Go. Go Pack. Uh, so with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Karen to the show today. Hello, Karen. Good morning, Corey. You nailed it. I don't know how I feel about that two decade part. I can't be old enough to be in a job for two decades, am I? And isn't that crazy? Time flies when you're having fun, right? It certainly does. <laughs> okay, so we want to dive in and get to know Karen a little bit. So first question is um tell us about your personal journey, your story. Where, where were you born and raised? You mentioned that you mentioned lived uh, or spent summers in Sheboygan. Yep. But tell us about your journey, your personal journey. Yep. Um, so personally, uh, born and raised in Racine County, so right on the southern part of the state. Um, I have a fantastic husband and two wonderful girls. Um, as I shared with you, Corey, my family and I were permanent campers at Plymouth Rock Campground for well over 10 years. Um, and there, my brother decided that he loved the area so much. He was the first one to move up here. And him being the baby of the family, my mom followed. And um, I then I was blessed to get this current position and able to move my whole family up here. And I tell you, I love Sheboygan. Love it. All right. Awesome. Um, number two, question number two. How did you get to where you are now professionally? <laughs> I do. Um, so, you know, as a CEO, I get asked this question quite often and I always giggle. Um, the fact of the matter is, is I really had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, even when I started college, you know, you look at how they prepare kids for college and their life after high school now, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I picked a super general degree that would let me go in a multitude of directions, um, which was communications for my undergrad. And even when I graduated, I still had no idea idea what I wanted to do. Um, it was I was hopeless. My first job was for juvenile crisis, um, which it works for the county and you have to respond to children who are in crisis situations. And it was at that point in time that I realized that my purpose was to be a nonprofit leader um, and to make the impact in lives that you never expected to make. So um my mom was hoping that I would go into insurance, but here I am. <laughs> wow. Um, thanks for sharing that. So leadership, I don't want to call it a buzzword, but it's probably as having more light shined on it now than ever. Mm -hmm. And everyone has different takes and styles of leadership. Yeah. So how would you talk about your leadership style? How would you describe that? Oh, well... I can describe what it's not, um, what I never want to be. I never want to be the smartest person in the room. I love to learn and to listen from my whole entire team when I have the availability to do so. And I think it's important for me to do that before I make a final decision. I consider myself to be a democratic manager and would like 
to I would like to believe at least that I foster an environment of consideration and healthy debate in giving everybody a voice in the project. Um, I learn something new every single day. And and that's the kind of leader I like to be. It just a representative for my team. Have you always taken that approach? Did your did your style kind of evolve throughout your career? I think it definitely involved. Um, when I was young in my career, I think, you know, a lot of people are prone to the same mistakes and making snap snap decision and thinking that they know everything. And, you know, that's 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 hard. Um, your pride takes a lot of hits. Um, you should never be the smartest person in the room. And to think that you are is just just a downfall. So um, I think over time, as you said, two decades, you learn a lot and um, you have to improve as you go. And I and I try to be better every single day. All right. OK, now tell us more about partners. Kind of like who do you serve? And I know you do a different different things and it has such a good impact. And, and now you're growing. So tell us more yes. about partners. And, and yes. Career. Well, how much time do you have, Corey? I could I could <laughs> as talk long as about we need. <laughs> I could talk about partners all day. Um let me see. I'm just gonna run through. I know you covered it all, but partners for community development is a nonprofit. We are headquartered headquartered in Sheboygan County, but we run the lakeshore from Milwaukee all the way up to Door County. Our mission is to provide the resources that connect all of the communities that we serve with safe and affordable housing. And I need to be clear about that. It's not always housing in the traditional sense, but it's whatever services are necessary to make the whole housing umbrella safe and affordable. Um, and I say that because you, we offer services like weatherization, which is our biggest program and we offer that program in our entire footprint and that program keeps the consumers utilities low cooler in the summer warmer in the winter we focus on things like air sealing or um, refrigerators where we know that our common places where energy gets lost and hard your hard-earned money is going out the window um, we offer, we also offer programs like um, energy assistance, which um, is, you know, you'll see it on your utility bill. We all pay for it. There is some money that's tucked away that goes to people who cannot cover their regular utility bills. So that's our entry level program. And once you get into energy assistance program, then you can move into different services like weatherization. Um, we have our HVAC program, which is um, focus is on your inoperable furnace or AC unit um, when it becomes unsafe or inoperable. Uh, we have water conservation. You know, sometimes you get your 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 um, water heater will start leaking or your toilet will run and those bills add up. So um, we're able to help with not only the cost of those bills, but also the repair so that um, we can keep that from happening again. Um, and then we have the home buyers program um, and that's down payment assistance. Um, for people who are buying homes. And we all know right now the housing market is absolutely just off the chain. Um, and we really focus on the affordability of that, considering the interest rate that the consumer might be receiving and the down payment that is necessary to keep the home in the affordability range. Um, we also have a critical repair program, um, which focuses on keeping community members into the home. So we do everything um, from the large scale work from foundation, windows, roofs to keep the housing safe. And then we um, definitely have uh, affordable housing. So in a very large scope, we serve our communities that fall under 60 to 80% of the area's median income. But more recently, that income bracket has expanded. And, you know, a lot of times people will be like, well, what the heck is an income bracket? What does that mean? Um, and it's basically that majority of our services are income Income based and it really depends on the household members that are in your home. So 
if you think that you uh, may be qualified, you should go to our website and check it out. Okay. I hope right. I didn't take too long, Corey. No, that's, I just just that's go amazing, and go all and go. It all it all starts though with energy assistance, getting some help with that, and that opens the door to even more opportunities for assistance. Yep, that and, and I mean energy assistance plays right into weatherization. So you right. have to be approved through energy assistance in order to get services like weatherization, uh, emer our HVAC services, um, but not necessarily our critical repair or our housing programs. Oh, okay, so the home buyers program, how do they? Do they work with the lender that comes to you? Do they go go to you first? How does that work? So we ask that you have a lender. We ask that you already be pre-approved for a home. And then once you get that pre-approval, you can come to us. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I mean, sometimes it ranges. Like I said, we can't give you a, you know, we'll give you $6,000 for down payment assistance. I can say that $6,000 will be the lowest you get. But with the housing crisis more recently, right. we've been given a lot more. Okay. All right. Okay. Next question. So you've been CEO now for, uh, for a stretch. When did you realize you had the confidence that you could step into a role like you're in for an organization the size of partners and uh, and handle it? Oh, this is, this is a tough question for me, <laughs> uh, Corey, especially, I mean, the fact that uh, my predecessor, Lucio, is in my bio is pretty darn significant. He was the founder and the executive director of this organization for over 45 years. Wow. Um, yeah. So those are tremendous shoes to fill. Um, and still, every day, I suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, confidence is definitely dependent on the day and everything that's going on. Um, the fact is that not everybody wants to be a leader, but somebody has to do it. And I, I, I knew, I knew that I could be one of those people who do it. So, um, not every day is easy, but every day is definitely worth it. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Okay. Now being the CEO, yes. um, a lot of people that have never been in your shoes. Yeah. or a CEO's shoes or business owner's shoes yeah. have a perception of what it's like to be a business owner and or CEO. Yeah. We call okay. those myths, right? So yes. uh, is there any anything you want to add or share to those out there? Of, you know, what's it like and what are some of the myths that maybe are stereotypes that are out there? Like, hey, it's not always sunshine and roses. Yeah, it certainly is not. I think the biggest myth that I <laughs> I would love to highlight is you know that you get to be your own boss right that you're the CEO you're at the top of the organization you get to do what you want um you know so the 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 myth that you get to be your own boss or even get to be the boss is probably the biggest myth that um I've stepped into <laughs> As a CEO, I have more responsibility and obligations than ever before. Um, not only do I feel responsible for everyone on my team, but the livelihood of the communities that we serve. Um, definitely heavy is the heart that is the CEO, you know, and when you think of things that keep you up all night and you, you, you are definitely not your own boss or the boss. You're you're ran by, you know, the agenda and everything that you have on your plate and and your responsibility for the teams and the communities. And uh, I want to add that you're not what I'll call a traditional nonprofit where you have one office serving one community community with a small team. That's you correct. You talked about how many locations you have and how many people are on your team. Uh, yeah. So, you know, as you know, Corey, that changes on any given day. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we do. We run the entire we entire lakeshore from Milwaukee up to Door County and every county in between. So um, you listed the counties off in the beginning. Yeah. It's a lot. Right. 
And um, we do have we do have five different locations and we have over 73 employees currently on this Monday. So um, you, I'm very blessed to have a phenomenal leadership team. This is not something that the CEO could or should do on their own. Um, and I think I think that's the important part that everybody should know is surround yourself with a great team. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think I say that, I mean, I, 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 I think I say that often. Yeah, you mentioned how you like to continue to learn, right? right? Yeah. And that's how you grow, is to learn yeah. and keep experiencing new things. Yeah. So have you experienced anything recently or had a, someone share something that just hit or landed um, that you want to share? Um, you, as far as advice goes, yeah, it's like you, you learn something new or someone gave you a piece of advice that, ah, oh, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that or heard that before or heard it that way before. Yeah. I would have to say the most poignant piece of advice that I have received. It was actually from a <laughs> politician, which take it as you may. Um, it was very, <laughs> very early in my career and, um, I was just, I was grinding, I was working hard, I was getting, I was, I was moving. And she looked at me. I had, you know, my girls were young at the time. And she said, You can achieve everything you've ever wanted, just not all at once. So pace yourself, otherwise you're at risk of burning out. And mm -hmm. that stuck with me. That stuck with me. I think of all of the hours and the times that I've missed, you know. So that mm -hmm. really redirected my life yeah that's powerful thanks for sharing i i have i have one of those that's similar that i think about frequently and even use when i talk to folks is that we all already have in us whatever we need to live our most perfect life yep we have it we just need to find it and foster it and bring it out yeah that's that's a good one you gave me goosebumps corey Ooh, all right okay so next one Shifting gears here a little bit from goosebumps to this one <laughs> is what is something you want to learn outside of work? Something Ooh. new. Yeah. Um, I've always, always wanted to cross stitch. Um, but, you know, as I add on those decades to my work career, my vision has also experienced decades of work. Um, and my vision is not what it used to be. So I'm thinking that I maybe switch to um, crocheting. I definitely need a hobby. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I've shared with you, Corey, my daughter recently had a pretty significant accident. She's been home a lot and doing a lot of things. So I bought her a crochet kit for beginners and needless to say, she never picked it up. So I think I'm going to have to give it a shot. All right. Okay. Looking ahead for partners, like, mm. like one to three years, where do you see the number one area of growth and development being for partners? Well, absolutely. I mean, our mission is to connect our community with safe and affordable housing. And, you know, that is the number one issue that is facing every single one of the communities that we serve. Um, the problem is so vast. Um, so I know that partners partners can make a difference and we need to decide where we can make biggest difference and we need to focus on that and do it every day um affordable housing is tremendous so i i'm pretty sure that uh you'll be hearing more about that from us okay and then on the flip side what do you see as being being the number one challenge to achieving that um <laughs> Wrong week for that question, Corey. Oh. I'm just going to have to say, I'm going to have to say politics, and I'm going to leave it right there. Okay. <laughs> okay, last question before we start wrapping up is, um, what advice do you have for leaders, CEOs, business owners who are trying to do it all on their own? You've yep. already shared some of that, but share a little more. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, I alluded to that before. Um, don't. Don't do it all on your own. Um, it would be absolutely silly for you to do it all by yourself. Surround yourself with people who are as equally dedicated as you are. Um, there is power in numbers. So um, never do it alone. Okay, now to wrap up, um, it's shout out time. 
I know you've had a lot of <laughs> mentors and people that have influenced you on, on your journey, and we always like to give folks a chance to give shout outs to them um, if you so choose. Yeah, I do. Um, I There has been so many leaders that came before me who really gave me the opportunity to grow, you know, right from my, my first one in juvenile crisis, my, my, my supervisor, Denise, and then switching positions. I, I had great supervisors, Amy and Katie, who always gave me, gave me the support that I needed, but there is one person who sticks out in my head more than anybody. And his name is Rodney Prunty. He is the former CEO of United Way of Racine County and my self-declared mentor. Um, he taught me so much about being a leader, not a boss, but a leader. Um, you know, he was willing to have those difficult conversations with me when nobody else was. Um, he led by example, which I think is tremendous for any leader. And I can say for certain that I would not be where I'm at without the support of Rodney Prunty. I know that he's moved on to bigger and better things. He is now the um, CEO of the United Way in New Mexico. Um, so he, yeah, he's doing incredible. I know his wife loves the warm weather. Um, they do not miss the snow, but, um, you know, he will, he will always go down in my book as my number one. Okay. Thank you. Um, now just to wrap up, how can someone learn more about partners and then how can someone get in touch with you if they have questions or your team? Ooh, great question. Um, I think uh, I think the first place to start, Corey, would just be going to our website, um, www.partners, the number four, and then c and d.com. Um, we, Bailey Fergins, who is our marketing and outreach manager, has done a great job of putting all of the information on our website, which is easy to understand. And then all of our contact information is there too. So it's like a one-stop shop. You can get your applications for the programs that we have. You can learn about the resources, find out about any upcoming events that we have, which there are some doozies coming up. Um, mm -hmm. Bailey's been working really hard. I suggest anybody just checking that out. Okay. And again, it's uh, www.partners4cd.com. Nailed it. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for today. But Karen, it was great getting to know you more. And uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks, Corey.